Subaru of or review. It's not immediately obvious what most of us think of these days when we imagine a Subaru. Two decades ago it would have doubtless been an Impreza Turbo warbling through a forest rally stage. A few might picture an SUV, others a bygone niche performance special, such as a tuned WRX hatchback or a Forester SDI. But according to Subaru, most people, particularly those in bigger markets for the company than ours, such as Japan and the U.S. Dash would think of a four-wheel drive estate, a legacy. And it's the legacy's old template on which the firm is hoping to capitalize with the Audi christened the Vorg. Previewed as a concept at the 2013 Tokyo Show, this car's identity comes from a collision of the words legacy, revolution and Turing, as you probably won't have surmised. Mercifully, the design brief is simpler, create a successor to the last but one fourth-generation legacy in terms of size and price and bring the Subaru AWD wagon concept up to date by way of a downsized turbocharged engine, a sophisticated cabin and a grand touring blend of dynamic sure-footedness, handling precision and ride finesse. All that backed up by a British touring car racing program that has already recorded race wins. Now to find out how effectively that brief has been delivered upon. It's easy to talk about squeezing big car cabin space into a downsized package, after all, but it's much harder to achieve. And aiming to pick up where one of the more popular passenger cars in Subaru's history left off may make sense to the firm's management, but can the same success be reproduced ten years later? Maybe, but if so, the Levorg's following here will need to come from deep in the left field. The car comes to the UK with only one engine and one gearbox. A combination of an all-new 1.6-liter turbo petrol flat 4 and a Linartronic continuously variable transmission, neither of which will be what a typical European buyer will expect to find in a new sporty wagon. So what other surprises does the Levorg have in store? And can it end up offering something genuinely appealing as well as different? Subaru UK only sells the current, 6th generation legacy in the guise of the jacked-up Outback crossover estate making the context into which the Levorg slots more murky for British buyers than it will be for others. Not just for the record, then, the Levorg is about 6 inches shorter at the curb than its bigger brother but is alleged to offer greater passenger space than the 5th generation Legacy, as well as a 522 litre load bay, rising to almost 1,500 litres with the back seats folded. The car's swept back silhouette, tapering roofline, Rising beltline, muscular surfacing and imposing details are all clearly intended to conjure the visual impact of a sports car from the outline of a five-door estate. But they seem to do that only moderately successfully in our tester's eyes, leaving the Levorg in a place where it can more accurately, and perhaps charitably, be described as distinctive rather than attractive. Underneath the device of styling is an all-steel body in white which is identical to that of the WRX hot hatchback from the B-pillars forwards and new from their aft, while being 50% more rigid than that of a Legacy. The car's suspension has been developed from that of the last Legacy, with McPherson struts up front, double wishbones at the rear and stiffer springs, uprated dampers, stronger anti-roll bars, stiffer bushings and slightly altered geometry all featuring. By Subaru's own benchmarking at least, the resulting car has a lower roll rate and crisper handling responses than most of its rivals. But the big mechanical debut is the 1.6-liter twin-scroll turbocharged FB16 boxer petrol engine buried under the Levorg's bonnet. Although it makes an ordinary-sounding 168 bhp at its peak, its 3,000 revolutions per minute widespread of 184 pounds foot of torque is alleged to give the Levorg the same level of performance as if it had been powered by one of the firm's old Edge Series 2.5 liter flat fours. It's Subaru's first engine ever to combine automatic stop start with direct fuel injection. It runs at an efficient sounding 11 to 1 compression ratio and it's sure to become a key power plant for future smaller models from the manufacturer. But however important it may turn out to be, a 168 bhp engine doesn't sound like much for a 30,000 pounds family car with sporting ambitions, much less one with such a large bonnet scoop. The continuously variable transmission through which the engine drives is also new. 
It's an adaptation of the one offered alongside Subaru's bigger motors and its fitment means that, instead of the proper center differential that Subaru's manual transmission models use in order to split power between the axles, the Levor uses a multi-plate clutch for the job. Torque vectoring by braking is also part of the drive juggling mix. For those of us used to sub RS of old, the Levor gives a curious proposition. We're more familiar with its turbocharged engines producing horsepower numbers beginning with a 2 and being mated to manual transmissions or automatics of the conventional variety. But here we are, downsizing comes no more obvious than this, with a 1.6-liter turbo 4-pot engine that's coupled to a continuously variable transmission. At least it's still a horizontally opposed 4-cylinder engine, although really there's little indication of that and certainly not in recognized Forester, Impasa fashion. Instead, it's just a smooth unit that spins away quietly and, to its credit, effectively. The Levorg's 0 to 60 miles per hour performance of 8.4 seconds would be competitive enough, were there an obvious competitor. The last car of similar size and power we drove, a Ford Focus wagon with a 148bhp 1.5-liter engine couldn't be coaxed to 60 miles per hour in any less than 10.0 seconds, even with a manual gearbox. Certainly, the fact that the Levorg offers a broad spread of torque, and from only 1,800 revolutions per minute, can make the engine feel like a larger and more sprightly unit than its size suggests. Frequently a small engine with a boosted output can feel a bit like as its turbocharger takes a moment to spin into life but throwing the CVT into the mix masks this characteristic completely. Throttle response is thus hardly sharp, but we suspect it wouldn't matter a great deal how quickly the engine picked up, given what it's mated to. If you're just mooching around, the transmission resides in its continuously variable mode, during which it's as smooth and unobtrusive as any transmission in Christendom. But there are also six preset ratios that allow it to do a passable impression of a conventional automatic, to give a more naturally accelerative feel than when keeping the revs at the disheartening constant drone of peak power. There are two modes. If you're an I, you'll need to push past 35% accelerator travel in order to get the transmission to behave like a normal auto, while in you only have to push past 30% throttle, not that any of our testers could discern much difference. Or, by assuming control with the steering wheel paddles in either mode, you can ask it to lock up into a set ratio, which it does fairly well, except when slurring ratio changes initially. Initially.